Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a terrible plan and make it much, much better. Now this is a 726 square foot or 67 square meter studio kind of one bedroom unit in Washington DC. Now this floor plan was submitted to me by a follower from Washington DC. And this is actually available for rent right now. And what we're going to do is we're gonna walk through the floor plan and we're gonna talk about some of the design problems with the current layout. And then we're gonna come up with some strategies of how to fix it and make it much better. So let's start out and we're gonna do this in a kind of interactive way. I'm gonna ask you some questions along the way and see what you guys think about the ideas and the changes. So let's have a look. So north is up, so this is south. So it's got a nice uh, south facing deck, which is actually a good thing. But there is a problem right at the beginning and you walk in directly into the bedroom. So let's just think about this. The front door to the hallway is in what it's called the bedroom. So your bed is gonna be here you're going to be sleeping here and you have actually a view out towards the corridor which makes zero sense in my opinion now i think the reason why they have done this is because there are only windows along one end of the unit this is a very long and very narrow unit and it's quite typical in North America now to have these dense, long, narrow apartments with windows only on one side as they kind of stack the floor plates to make more units. So there is no bedroom window. And I think the way that this is thought about in terms of a code requirement is that if you are sleeping in here, you have your two ways of egress, which is through the front door or out to the balcony. And there is no enclosure around the bedroom whatsoever to make it a room unto itself. So I think that's kind of how they get away with it. The problem is, is this is actually a terrible location for the bedroom. And you're always gonna feel like you're kind of in a kind of a motel type situation with the door to the hallway right opposite the bed. So there's also some other issues with the floor plan. The bathroom, although it's a, you know a good size it's fairly large is not very well designed i think there's an issue with the door swinging right against the tub because you're always gonna have to close the door to access the tub which is awkward for such a big bathroom there's actually only really a small vanity counter with not a lot of storage and then the toilet is opposite the washer dryer so as I said in my Instagram channel, I think that this is actually kind of a crappy location for the washer dryer because it's right opposite the toilet. I mean, what are you gonna do? Sit on the toilet and fold your laundry, like take your socks out and separate them? It's a, just a very odd layout to have the laundry inside the bathroom in a separate closet. So then traveling into the main space, you kind of come through this sort of structural column. And then we have the kitchen in the back corner, which isn't so bad. But if we look at it a little closer, this kitchen layout is pretty terrible. There is no, no lower storage. You've got your fridge, then you've got a really small, awkward internal corner, your sink, your dishwasher, and your cooktop all in a row. So there's absolutely zero lower storage and there's only these upper cabinets. So when there's so much room, in the living dining kitchen space, it's odd to me that they would cram the kitchen and crunch it into the corner. And the living dining space, sure, it's good. It's a big size. It's probably more than 50% of the unit, but it's also kind of blank. It's gonna be you know, interesting to kind of program. I guess you could put your dining table here, and then you've got a huge space for the living area, but I mean, it seems ginormous for a one bedroom unit. So I think there's a lot of potential um, to redesign this so that it's more space efficient. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna now work on this and we're gonna clear it out and we are going to go to the next level. So instantly, once I clear it out, it looks much better. So we're gonna have to keep the structural columns that are embedded into the wall and we're gonna try to work with the plumbing as much as we can. We're gonna pretend like this is a renovation where we don't aren't able to make massive changes in terms of plumbing. So I always like to start out when I'm working on these units with my squares, my red and green squares. And everybody knows uh, if you've taken the puzzler course what these are, these are the puzzler pieces. This red square is about 10 feet by 10 feet uh, square, which is uh, approximately three by three meters. And then this green square is five feet by approximately eight feet. So it's a rectangle. So it's about 1.5 meters by let's say 2.45 meters. And this is actually the size of a bedroom. 
and this one is the size of a bathroom and I like to kind of figure out where we can place these in the plan to make this better. Now I think that a lot of people would think well what you should do is the bedroom should really be at the front with the window so let's imagine that it goes down there but let's have a look at this. Would this be a good layout for the unit if you had a bedroom enclosed at the front? I actually don't think so because the bedroom regardless if it went on the door side or the other side is going to take up all basically all of the frontage that you need and then you're going to have this kind of snorkel space which I don't think is particularly good for the bedroom. So I don't think that that, that actually works. I don't think that's a good idea. So the other option you know what if we put it back where it was I mean you could put the bedroom up at the top and maybe think about enclosing it and keeping the closet where it is but this is sort of 10 by 10 this is kind of a minimum size for a bedroom and up at the top we're chopping it off by a couple feet we're kind of making it narrow it's kind of eight feet so it's not a great location for the bedroom I mean you can't really put it here because that's even worse I think in terms of access so that leads me to kind of thinking well what if we put the bedroom you know kind of in the middle what would that do would that allow us to get some sort of daylighting into the bedroom maybe with some sort of internal windows or some sliding doors and then what's interesting is we have kind of an alternate space that is created up at the top we have the option for maybe possibly adding another room which in a 700 square foot unit could add value to the property so I think that that is a strategy would work to have maybe a space by the entry and then maybe the bedroom moves to the middle. It does shrink our living dining kitchen, but this is a one bedroom unit. I'm not sure that that's such a bad idea. So let's think about the bathroom. I don't think we can fit the bathroom in between. It's not quite enough room. I think we're going to end up having to keep the bathroom kind of where it is, but maybe we can turn it on its end and use the extra space for something else maybe we can create some storage and possibly a better laundry space so this is kind of how i strategized with this to try to create maybe two rooms one bedroom and one secondary space and then maybe trying to shift the bathroom design a little bit so that we have the opportunity to create laundry so i'm going to just put in the walls that i have drawn in and I've created a little bit more um, space. So what I did is I made sliding doors again opposite the entry and this is kind of like a, I would say a kind of flexible space. It could be maybe a place for a desk. It could also be storage. It's just another room that you can have, not a bedroom, but another room that you could use for flexible things. Maybe if you're a biker or a skier, you can put your bikes in there. I created an entry closet and then coming down, I actually created a walk-in closet opposite the bedroom with sliding doors because I thought, you know, it's nice to have a lot of storage. And then I sort of thought of the bedroom as being very lofty. You would obviously put your bed here. And I wanted to try to open it up and have views from the bed, possibly out to the windows and keep this area quite open because I think if this was by code to be a kind of a junior one bedroom or a studio one bedroom, we're gonna have to open up this wall as much as possible. We can't really have it as a solid wall because we can't really enclose it because there's no egress window. So maybe this wall is actually like a half wall with glass above or maybe it's all glass, something like that. I also added a little closet here and then I made a laundry area, some storage, and then a bit, bit, bit of a bigger bathroom. So now we can add in some of the elements and I just really want to quickly move these over. These are my Morfolio Trace um, stencils for Plan Attack, which I love using because they're so easy to uh, manipulate around. And I think we can probably just leave the toilet in the space that it was before. We don't have to move it. And we can leave the vanity in the space that it was before, but we probably would be able to extend it just a little bit and then where we had the laundry before, I think that's where we should put the shower. And I think we could make a bigger shower by extending it on the end. And then I think the laundry should go outside of the bathroom in its own storage room. And then we can have a linen closet prob probably after. So that's how I would probably rearrange the bathroom. And then I wanna think about the living room, so, or the kitchen. So this is a block that is the kitchen block. And I just wanna think about this here. Where would we put it? Um, oh, I'm just going to put that back so I don't take out some of the tub with the, uh, the stencil. So I'm just going to move this again. So there's kind of three places we could put it. I mean, we could put it here against 
the wall of the bedroom. But remember we talked about this wall possibly being glass above or all glass. So I'm not sure that actually would work because we have to open up the bedroom as much as we can. We could put it on this side, you know, plunk it on here, but I don't really like the relationship of the end of the kitchen to the window because this kitchen or this window goes almost full width and I don't like having the end of the counter on that. But it's interesting on this side, there's kind of a jog in the wall. I'm always looking for natural placements for, um, for uh, kitchen cabinets and other cabinets and this kind of seems to be kind of a natural place that we might be able to just place the kitchen we could probably just put it up and see how it just kind of fits in there that's actually kind of a good idea so just very quickly what I would do with this layout is I would probably oops I'll just reverse that back I would put the fridge at the top you know something like this so that it uh, the door swing is against that little wall and then I like to have the dishwasher and the sink next to the fridge just because I think just from a single-sided kitchen point of view it works the best so we'll leave a space for the dishwasher I'll put the the sink there and then we can put the cooktop at the end so this is quite a bit different than the original layout because what we have now is we have the opportunity for some lower storage as well as upper storage and maybe we could even fit in a pantry there or use the closet that is adjacent as a pantry so when I draw it all in properly this is kind of how it all looks I have the kitchen kind of fit in along the side. I have drawers or cupboards below on both sides of the cooktop, my sink, my dishwasher, my fridge, and I even fit in a pantry. And then this closet is kind of like extra storage and it could also be possibly pantry for the kitchen. Remember, this is all gonna be quite open. I have my walk-in closet, my coat closet, kind of a flexible room. I've got linen, I've got a washer dryer with some hanging space, and then I've got a bigger vanity and I've got a bigger shower with a bench. So I think we've done a better job on all of this. Let's just finish up by thinking about the furniture. And I think I had told everybody before that I think that the bed, this is a queen size bed, you could probably fit a king in here too, would go against this wall, which I think is a really great idea. And then I think the nice thing is when we have this sort of half wall, we can actually use the wall as a kind of backer for the sofa. And I think this is one of the things that is really, really important when you're doing a layout in a small space. You always want the sofa to kind of have a back like to it. So imagine if this wall was, you know, like four feet high or something, and then there was window above it, that would be a nice place to put the back of your sofa. And then that gives you sort of a natural location for the television and we could probably fit in a kind of a corner chair on a on a diagonal something like that and then we've got this space here left over for the dining room oops so i'm just going to use a round table i'm going to just place that in here and just stick it like that and you've got space now for a dining table and then of course we would have a coffee table so this is kind of what i think we could do to furnish it if you wanted to use that upper section as a as a study desk you could put a desk there some people wouldn't like that because they would think oh it's too dark in the top i don't want to be in that area but i mean if this was a one bedroom plus a kind of den or a study Study space that actually does add some value to the apartment so if I draw this in properly with the furniture drawn in this is kind of how it all looks oh I changed the table from a round to a square but you can decide what to do and then if I put the people in with the views it's interesting because before <laughs> your bed was basically at the front door here you've got a view out the front window through this division in glass you could also probably put a low TV and if you're sitting on the sofa you can watch TV and look out so I think this is much much better than what we had before so I'm really interested to hear your feedback about this these ones are tricky they're kind of called in different jurisdictions like a junior one bedroom or an urban one bedroom or a studio one bedroom because they're kind of what I call a cheater bedroom. They're not really a bedroom. It's kind of an area for the bed that is created with sliding doors and glass partitions and different jurisdictions have different requirements for how much glass you actually have to have facing towards the living room. So in Washington, we may not be able to get away with any solid wall. We may have to make this all out of sliding glass doors, which would be okay. We would just have to design it appropriately for the jurisdiction. So I really wanna hear what you guys think about this redesign. Um, leave a comment. I do read all the comments in detail and I try to reply to as many as I can. And if you're interested in learning more about my process of how I design floor plans and how my thought process works and what works and what doesn't, I encourage you to to look at my workbooks where you can learn all the secrets to creating better floor plans and these are my secrets that I've kind of developed over the years in terms of how I approach floor plan design so have a look at these workbooks they're really fun and interactive to do